two, one. All right, family, we are now live. We are now live. How's everybody, how's everybody feeling today? Good. Feeling great. Feeling better than amazing. Say less, say less, say less. If you're ready to it's get a good to day, the- have a great day. You said what? Good day, have a great day. Yes, sir. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so today we're going to be learning FRX basics. This is very key to you all's success when it comes to navigating through the Meta Trader 4 app, you know, and copying and pasting trades and making a lot of money. All right, so if everybody ready, can I get it ready on three? One, two, three. Ready. ready. All right. Ready. So, cool. So, presentation overview. Today, guys, we're going to be learning MT4 navigation, pair abbreviations, when and when not to trade, right? Types of traders, buy versus sell, risk management, lot sizes, how to calculate pips, and how to secure profit, aka a bag. Hope that makes sense. All right. But before we, you know, make money, we got to be in the right headspace, family. Because in trading, understand it's 90%. Mental, 10% skill, right? Start your week off with intention and purpose, meaning you should all have a trading goal. You should all be trading for something. If you see some new shoes that you want, look up how much it costs, divide it by two weeks, you know, whatever the case may be, and make that amount, make that amount of money on a day-to-day -day basis and buy that thing that you want, all right? Everybody should wake up with a motive or a vision or something. If, the, if you don't, go back to sleep, all right? Find your why and never forget it. Because there's going to be times when you will lose in this space. But you shouldn't be losing a lot of money. There should never be any big losses because we teach you proper risk management. All right. But in cases if you do lose and you take a big loss because you might have slipped up and did something, you know, crazy. Remember your why. Remember why you're here. All right. Don't give up on moms. Don't give up on dads, little brothers, sis, whatever the case may be. Stay focused. We don't take losses. We take lessons. All right. Sharpen your greatest tools, which is your heart and your mind. When you got those two in alignment, everything's gonna be perfectly cool. All right. Everybody say cool on three. One, two, three. Cool. Say less, say less. All right, bet. Wait, is everybody notes out? Everybody notes out and stuff? Okay, bet. Bet, Zay. Jamarcus. Yeah. You you taking notes? I need you taking notes. I am I got you. Say less. All right. <laughs> All right, bet, cool. So apps to download. These are key apps to help you be very successful in this space. So make sure we have these, right? If you didn't see it in the, in the previous video, the welcome, you do need MetaTrader 4, you do need Telegram, right? And you do need Zoom. Those are three essential apps that will help you be very, very successful and profitable in this space. Like literally, if you don't have these apps, like you literally won't make any money or get any type of knowledge. So families, make sure we have these apps, all right? Cool, cool, cool. Next, so we, we, it is essential that we open a demo account on the MT4, all right? A demo account is a practice account, all right? Where you get virtual money, but you can take real life trades. So if I send out a signal and you take it in your demo and you're making money, understand it's not really your money, it's virtual money, practice, right? Because practice makes what, anybody? Perfect. Perfect. Perfect, exactly. I love the participation family, it's amazing. All right. And we're also going to edit the chart settings on MT4, and we'll be adding and deleting pairs, okay? I'm going to share my screen and make sure I walk you through these steps by steps. No, walk you through this step by step. Yeah, that sounds better. All right, cool. So should I show you all how to open up the app right now because the next time I talk about spread? Or, or Zay, should I go through it and then at the end open up the app and stuff? Which one are you feeling? I would do it before. Yeah. All right, everybody take out your phones that, you know, and I need y'all to follow along with me. We're about to open up the MT4 app. I'm about to be sharing my screen. I'm actually going to join the call. Give me five seconds. I'm joining the call right now. Um. I'm gonna have to stop sharing my screen right quick. I'm gonna share my screen on my phone. Make a noise if you can see my screen. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so 
Can y'all see these apps that I have? MO, yeah. if you ain't got a Forex tab, you're playing yourself. Remember that. So to the far right, we see the MetaTrader 4 app. That is an app that you guys want to make sure that you have on your phone <laughs> because this is where you're going to be taking the live trades. All right, I know we see a bunch of numbers and letters and, th and different things of that nature, but understand I will be telling you, you know, teaching you all this stuff means and it's very simple. All right. So the first thing that we wanted to do is open up a demo account. All right, so in, in order to do that, once you open your MetaTrader 4, I need everybody to click settings, bottom right, okay? Go to new account, okay? Go to new account, open a demo account, type in at the top KOT, okay? Type at the top KOT, and then click KOT demo, boom. You guys wanna fill out your name, put your number and your email, do not touch account type. Make sure your leverage is one to 500, right? And we wanna make this as realistic as possible, family. You know, normally we don't come in with $100,000, so we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna lower it, okay? Take it down to 3,000. And all you click is register, okay? And then click done. Boom, demo account is, is set up. All right, is anybody, did anybody make it that far? Is everybody okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay, so that's cool. So now it's gonna take you to the quote page. All right, it's gonna take you to the quote page. And on the quote page, you wanna start adding your pairs that we will be trading. Pairs that you will be seeing in the signals chat and from your products that you do wanna trade. So by I adding these pairs, first off, you wanna make sure it's not on simple, it's on advanced at the top. All right, then you wanna click the plus sign at the top right. You wanna click four X crosses. You wanna add all of the pairs by clicking the green plus sign at the far, life, far left repeatedly. Right, then do not click done family, do not click done, you are not done. Go back, boom, go to cryptos. We trade Bitcoin family, yay. Everybody say yay for Bitcoin. Yay. All right, bet. BTC USD. BTC USD. Right? Then the next thing, ETH USD. ETH USD. Then the last thing, XRP USD, if, which you should see if you scroll all the way down at the bottom. Boom. You're not done yet, family, though. Click the back arrow. Go to metals. We do trade gold. And the abbreviation for gold is XAU USD. Click that. Boom. You're not done just yet. One more. You got a couple more pairs to go. Click the back arrow. Okay. Then you want to go to indexes. Right. These are very volatile pairs, meaning these pairs move really, really fast, meaning you need a lot of money to trade these pairs. And I'm going to break all that down for y'all as well. For GER30, GER30, you need at least $300 to trade. Add it. For NAS100, NAS100, you need minimum $250 to trade. If you don't have these amounts of money, do not touch these pairs. All right, they are the pairs with the numbers in them. You should remember them, okay? Add NAS100. XPX500, you need $150 to trade. US30, you need $500 to $700. US 30 not gonna play with you, so you don't play with her. All right. All right, now you can finally click done. You're done now. You added all your pairs in there and they go in alphabetical order, right? The first six to seven pairs will be your USD pairs family because understand we all stay, well, if you stay in the United States, that is your base pairs, okay? That's why all the, your, your, the USDs pairs will be at the top. And then it's going to start going to alphabetical order, as you can see, AUD CAD, AUD CHF, AUDs, then C, E, G, N, y'all get the gist, right? And at the bottom, you will see your cryptocurrencies, like I said, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple. You'll see gold, and you'll see your indices that I said stay away from unless you got certain amounts of money. If you don't remember what I said, just play this video back just a little bit more just to hear what I said. Because understand, if you touch these pairs, without having the amount of money that you should, you will lose your account. 
So make sure you guys really pay attention to what I'm saying. All right, now the next thing that we wanna do family is that we wanna edit our charts. So you wanna do that by clicking settings, right? Click charts, okay? I want you guys to take a screenshot of this or take a picture, but you wanna make sure your ax price line is on, period separators, trade levels, OHLC in data windows, right? And then you wanna to go to colors. And for the foreground, you can choose your favorite color. In this case, mine is blue. Make sure your grid is black, right? Bar up and bar down, white. Bull candle, blue. Bear candle, red. Line chart, red. Volumes, red. Bid price line, yellow. Ask price line, teal, blue. All right, trade levels, orange, and stop levels, red. Take a screenshot of this, pause the video if you need to do it on your phone. All right, cool. Go back, go back. Now family, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because those was the first steps. Boom, now I'm back sharing my computer screen. And we back on what? On the PowerPoint. Now, I know we've seen a lot of different things. So I'm gonna break all these things down for you in simpler terms. Spread, all right? What is the spread? All right, if you notice, we highlighted it for you all so you can see. Spread 33, spread 17, spread 23. The spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price line. All right, don't try to get too you know, intellectual on this part. Only thing that you need to know about the spread is that a higher spread means you need more money, more capital. <laughs> the higher the spread, okay? You wanna, you wanna trade spreads 35 and under. I'm gonna say it one more time. You wanna trade trades with, with spreads of 35 and under. As we can see right here, US 30 has a 300 spread. You know why? Because like I said, it's really volatile, right? High spread equals increase in charge for getting to the trade, right? Y'all do get charged like seven cents to 10 cents to get into these trades, all right? Spreads spike up around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. So around five, I probably will stay off the charts, okay? Is everybody with me so far? Everybody good? Yeah. <clears throat> cool. cool, cool, cool. All right, next page. All right, margin level percent. As you can see right here, this is how your MetaTrader 4 app will look when you're on trade and you're in the live trade. Like I said, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you guys that, right? Your margin level percent, you never want it under 200. Okay, margin level percent is simply how likely are you able to survive this trade that you're in, meaning not blow your account. And if it gets under 200, you're ready to lose a lot of money. Don't let it get under 200. Over leveraging, you look, using a bigger lot size, and I'm gonna explain what lot size mean shortly, right? But over leveraging your account, meaning not having that $500 like I told you to have in US 30 and only having like $200 and trying to trade, so your spread is lower than 200, you over leveraging your account family. You will blow your money. Do not do that. All right? Never let your margin level percent go under 200. To be extra safe, I don't let mine go under 500. Simple as that. All right, cool. All right, so FRX pair abbreviations. Y'all gotta start understanding the FRX lingo because I understand this is foreign. This is foreign to you, but I promise y'all don't become overwhelmed. Just listen and keep listening and keep listening and keep listening. The more you listen to this, you will understand how to how effectively use it. Okay, it's like when you go to school when you first took algebra, you didn't understand two x plus four, two x plus four equals eight. You didn't understand at a point in time how to solve it. But what happened? The teacher taught it. She gave you homework. She gave you a quiz. She gave you more homework. She gave you a test. You understand, see what I'm saying? So it's the same thing here. Keep getting on these training calls, keep tapping in. Repetition is key in understanding this business. So if you keep tapping in, you will see major success in this space. All right, so let's get into the pairs abbreviations. So if you see AUD, that's the Australian dollar. All right, CAD, Canada, or the Canadian dollar. CHF, Switzerland. EUR is the Euro, the European. Right, GBP is the Great Britain pound. 
JPY, Japan, NZD, New Zealand, USD, United States. Simple as that. Simple as that. The more you look at it, the more you see it, the more you will understand, I promise. Right? So, Curtis, when is the best time for us to trade? Because I need to know when I need to be up or when I need to be asleep or how can I make the most amount of money? So I'm glad you asked that, Jamarcus. I got you, bro. Um, so the market, you know, is open five days a week, 24 hours a day, right? The market opens up Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and closes at, you know, Friday at 5 Eastern Standard Time, okay? So the best is different sections, different sessions, I'm sorry, you know, that's broken up when it comes to trading. You got the London, New York, Sydney, and Tokyo. The London session and the New York session are the two best sessions to trade. And when are these times? It says it's right here. 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? And it closes at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The New York opens up at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and closes at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? For CST, so tracking the hour. For PST, Pacific Time, Cali Time. I'm in Cali right now. All right. Subtract three hours. And those are your time zones. And the best times to trade is the London and the New York session. And these are the times. The best time to trade is London, New York, and here are the times. Y'all should get that. All right. And you always tip. You want to trade a pair in that proper session so you can maximize your profit. The EUR, the GBP, that's in the London section. The CAD and the USD, New York. That's all you need to know. These aren't the best sessions to trade, so I don't really wanna waste my time telling you. These, the GBP, EUR, CAD, and USD are the best pairs to trade around these times. Can I get a next if everybody understands that? Next. Cool. How are we doing so far? Everybody cool? Is it making sense? Yes, yeah, make sense. I feel like I'm really breaking this down. Like, am I, am I breaking this down? Yeah, you mean. Say less. Yeah. Appreciate it, my boy. Then you then you just joined like yesterday, Jamarcus. Huh? You just joined yesterday, right? Yeah. For sure. And you understanding this? Yeah, I'm understanding. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I'm making sure, bro. All right, so we're not to trade. Y'all, we are recession proof, but one thing that makes our market move move crazy is news. Okay, right? If you guys go to forexfactory.com, matter of fact, show is telling, right? Right, let me show you the website. Let me show you the website. That's all you type in. That's all you type in. Boom, it should look just like this. Boom. This right here tells you the news, family. This right here tells you the news. Forex Factory. I'm gonna get back to the PowerPoint, the PowerPoint because they got examples on here as well, right? So when you log on to Forex Factory, you're gonna see the day. You're gonna see the date. You're gonna see different times. You're gonna see different pairs, right? You don't want to trade red or orange folders or gray. You don't want to trade red or orange folders, and gray meaning it's a holiday. Okay, you only want to trade when you see yellow family. So at 1 a.m., you can trade any pair with JPY or any other pair. At 3.15, you better not trade a pair that got EUR in it. Do, do, do y'all understand that? You, if you see red or orange by the name, do not trade any pair with that name in it. Y'all get that? Yeah. Say less. Right, the first week of each month, a lot of news comes out. You want to be very cautious when it comes to trading the first week of each month because news make the market go crazy at the, at the first week of each month. It's the non-farm payroll, right? NFP week. A lot of unemployment, a lot of news come out, right? Tip, if your account is small, do not trade crypto pairs in indices. Start trading crypto pairs and indices when you have 200 or more dollars. I'm setting a new rule. Zay, you got that new rule? Did she get off? No, she's still on. Yeah, no. 
I got the rule. I bet if your account is too small, meaning if you don't have more than two hundred dollars, I don't want you trading crypto or indices. If you trade crypto, you only can trade XRP with a 0 0.01 max 0 0.02. And it's gonna make sense what those number means when I get later on into this. Okay. All right. Next thing, you got four types of traders, right? You got your scalpers, your people that wanna come, come in here, make money in, the, in, first, in their first five to 15 minutes. Boom, out of there, right? You got your day traders, the people who hold trades anywhere from 15 minutes, you know, to 30, to an hour, to two, to three, okay? You got your swing, well, or day. Day traders are or day. All right, your swing traders, they hold it for days, okay? Understand the more you hold trades, the more pip count you get, and we're gonna get into all that too. And you got your position traders. Position traders hold trades for months. Like they get in one trade, and hold it forever. So you gotta figure out what type of patience you have, what type of discipline you have, and what type of trader you are, okay? Next thing, boom. Okay, we're gonna cook up on this. We got a buy versus sell. Y'all finna get the sauce right here, right now. Need everybody paying attention, right? In y'all charts, y'all gonna have blue candlesticks and red candlesticks. I need y'all to understand, blue means buy, BB. Blue means buy. Blue means the market bought up. Because a buy means the market went up. A sell, sell, go to hell, right? It's red. It's going down. Red candlestick means the market sold. Blue candlestick means the market bought, right? The market moves in three different ways. Over here, you got an uptrend. Over here, you got a downtrend. A uptrend is when the market is making higher highs and higher lows. And this is what I mean, right here, it made a high. Boom, it dropped down, made a low. Broke up, oh my God, this is higher than the previous high. This is a higher high, Drop down. Oh my God, this low is higher than this low. Well, it's higher, yeah, than this low. That's a higher low. Oh, boom, higher high, higher low, higher high. That is an uptrending market. You wanna take buying opportunities in this market. You want to buy right here, boom, profit. Buy right here, boom, profit. Buy right here, boom, profit. Okay. Downtrend, lower highs and lower lows. Lower high, lower low. Lower high, lower low. Sale, sale, profit. Sale, profit. Sale, profit. Does everybody understand the buy versus sell? Yeah. All right, cool. That's cool. And the third way to move is, is consolidation. And consolidation is when the market moves size by side. All right, hold on. Y'all see this? The market, you see on it, if we look at the uptrend, the market is kind of going like this up, right? And the downtrend, the market is going like this. But in consolidation, the market just stays like this. We don't want to trade this. We want to trade either uptrends or downtrends. Does, does everybody understand that? Yes. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. I'm liking this. Oh, yeah. I ain't talk. Ooh. Yeah, I'm cooking up now. All right. All right, so the next thing, family. I don't like how they demonstrated. I'm gonna skip this one because I'm not, I'm not gonna, no. I don't like how this picture looks. I don't like how this picture looks, so nobody pay too much attention to that, okay? I don't like how they picture too. Just understand candlesticks, all those blocks that you see when you click charts on your MetaTrader 4 at the bottom left, you see charts. Candlesticks are those red and blue candle, candle rectangles that you see. Those are candlesticks. Blue means buy, red means sell. Simple as that. Okay, here we go. Y'all ready for class? This is real class right here. Here we go. What is a lie? Okay, make sure y'all know something for this. This right here is gonna, 
help you not blow accounts. Okay? The lot, the number of units you will buy or sell. Watch this. How much money you're able to put on the trade? Simple. How much money you're betting on the trade? And not betting is gambling, but how much money you're wagering, right, to make more money. Okay? More capital or more money equals bigger lot sizes. Equals And bigger lot size equals more money in a small amount of time. Simple as that. Okay? Lot sizes are broke down into three different terminologies. We got micro, mini, and standard. Micro are your 0.01s. 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. Hope y'all understand it. Okay? And so the market, it, it, it moves times 10. And I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what you mean. All right, so when you pop a lot size, you're asking for some money per pip that you catch. And I'm going to pips, you know what I'm saying, next. All right? If you pop a 0 0.01, you're telling the market, I want 10 cents per pip that I catch. I got a formula for y'all. And, it, and it's not A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's simple math. Who, who wants to learn money math? Who wants to learn? Okay. Okay. And teach y'all something. This is a formula. Write this down. Lot size times 10 equals money per pill. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it two more times. Lot size times 10 equals money per pill. Lot size times 10 equals money per pill. What does that mean, Curtis? If I pop a 0 0.01 lot size and I multiply times 10, it should give me 10 cents per pill. Is that simple, y'all, or is that, is that hard? Simple. Yeah, okay. Simple. Okay. I'm gonna ask questions. All right, so Naya, if, if I pop a 0 0.05, how much money am I asking for per pill? 50 cents. Oh, okay. Damn. Okay. Excuse my language, y'all. Oh. Okay. Okay. Jamarcus, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. If I pop a 0 0.08, how much money am I asking for per pill? Huh? If I pop a 0 0.08, how much money am I asking for per pill? Do you remember the formula I, I, I just taught you? Yep. Type it um, in your calculator. You said you don't know the formula? Yeah, um, you said five size times 10 equals money per? Yeah, money per pill. So what's 0 0.08 times 10? Oh. You said what? Hold up. <laughs> Use your calculators. Zero point. So how much money is that? If you put that in money terms. What, um, that should be 80 cent, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm bad enough, so. You said what? I said I'm bad enough. So. You bad at math? Yeah. For sure, don't worry. That's why repetition is key. Every time that you get, every time I tell you to pop a lot size, I want you to make a habit where um, you go to your iPhone calculator you, and you type in your lot size and just times it by 10 every single time. And you say what? I say all right. Say less. So the next lot is, is called a mini. All right, a mini lot. And a mini lot is anywhere from 0.10 and up, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.25, 0 0.30, 0 0.45, all that. Zay, if I pop a 0 0.56, how much money is that per pill? $5.60. All right. 
Anaya, if I if I pop a 10.00, how much is that per pip? $100. Hmm. $100 per pip. That's a lot of money, ain't it? Okay. So let's say, for example, we had an account balance of $100. Okay. And we sent out two signals. We had a buy USD, USD JPY signal sent out and a sell GBP CAD signal. And let's say you want to enter in both trades. All right. This is another formula. Write this down. Because I'm going to teach y'all 10% risk management, proper risk management. We use 10% proper risk management. Okay. So write this down. Account balance divided by a thousand equals max lot size. Account balance divided by a thousand equals max lot size. Okay. Meaning if I have a hundred dollar account and I do a hundred divided by a thousand, my max lot size should be 0.1. And a 0.1 lot size, Zay, is how much money per pill? A point one? Yeah. A dollar. Okay. Okay. So if you want to enter in two trades, you either can um you either can you can split it up. Okay. So the first trade you can pop a point zero five. And then the second one you pop a point zero five because if you add that up, that's point ten. You're still in your proper risk management. Or you can break it up and pop point zero two, point zero two and one, point zero two, point zero two and another one, and have twenty more um sent to wager with. You see what I'm saying? You gotta break it down. You can't pop a point twenty with a hundred dollar account. You should not do that. That's over leveraging. You're gonna blow your account. Okay. So now if I have a, um a $365 account, what's my max lot size? Zero point three sixty five. Yeah. Okay. Like three. Point, we're gonna say three six. We're gonna say three six. Cause you can't put like three numbers on there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's right. That's right. Good stuff. Jamarcus. Yo. <clears throat> um, if I have a two hundred dollar account, what's my max lot size? Do you remember the formula I gave? Yeah, I got the formula. I come by. Um, yeah. You said what? That's Do two hundred divided by a thousand. What you get? Oh, okay. So it's like this. Uh, yeah. Zero point two. All right, bet. And how much money per pip is that? Um, uh, Do point two times ten. Or move the decimal over one time. Say less. Two dollars for a pip, right? Yeah. Say less. <clears throat> so what's a pip? Y'all, pips are simply steps in the market. You either, you either in the positive or you either in the negative. Okay. You either in the positive or you either in the negative. Okay. So let's say TP was for 50 pips. And TP simply means take profit. Meaning when your trade hit a certain point in the market, it's going to automatically take you out with money. You made money. If I ever say TP smashed, TP demolished, TP ob obliterated, TP smacked, that means money was made. Now, SL means stop loss. Your safety net, meaning money was lost. Or if you move your stop loss and profit, which I have a video that I can send to you guys, make sure you go to your nearest upline to get the video on how to move stop loss and profit. It's pretty cool. All right. So... TP, stop loss. So let's say TP was for 50 pips. 
a more simple math. This is how, this how you figure how much money you're making. All right. So if we pop a 0 0.01 lot size and we call 50 pips, you do 50 times not the lot size, but what the lot size mean. So if you pop a 0 0.01, that means 10 cents per pill. So do 50 times 10 cents. You should be up $5. Okay. This is why a bigger account is better because you can pop a bigger lot and make way more money. Because if I had a $100 account, I can pop a 0.1 and I can make $50. Oh, or if I had a thousand dollar account, I can pop a 1.0, catch ten dollars per pill, and make five hundred dollars. Yeah, does everybody understand pips? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Uh oh, okay, here we go. How to open and close trades, pending orders, and how to secure profit. First, I'm gonna go over pending orders first. I don't, I don't send out buy stops or sell stops often, but if you ever see one, it's a pending order. Meaning you place the order, but the trade has not activated yet. It's gonna activate on its own. When it reach a certain point in the market, when it reach a certain price that you place, that you copy from the signal share. A buy stop simply means it goes up, it hits your pending order and keeps going up. A sell stop means it went down, hit your order and it kept going down. Now a buy limit means it sold first, then hit your buy limit, then went up. A sell limit means it bought up first, hit your price, then sold down. Okay. All right, now, the next thing I'm gonna do is show you guys this on Metatrade for them. Let me pick up the phone, wait. Five. 